This is going to be a short review for Sabres, Saddles, and Spurs. This is the Civil War Diary of Lieutenant Colonel William R. Carter of the Confederate States of America. It was edited by Colonel Swank, the United States Air Force, retired. Um, I'll read a little bit about Lieutenant Colonel Carter here from the introduction. This is in part one. It says, <clears throat> This is the introduction to the exciting war diary of Lieutenant Colonel William R. Carter, Confederate States of America, of the 3rd Virginia Cavalry. Brigadier General William C. Wickham's Brigade, Major General Fitzhugh Lee's Cavalry Division, Cavalry Corps, Army of Northern Virginia. Colonel Carter was born April 22, 1833, in Nottoway, Virginia, Nottoway County, Virginia, and graduated from Hampton Sydney College with the highest honors. He later studied law, and at the beginning of the war, he was a member of the law firm of Howard and Sands in Richmond, Virginia. He enlisted on May 27, 1861, as a private in Company E, Nottoway Troop, of the 3rd Virginia Cavalry, and was later promoted to Lieutenant Colonel. He was frequently in command of his regiment, and always fought it well. He fell mortally wounded at the Battle of Trevilian Station on June 11, 1864, the greatest and bloodiest all-cavalry battle of the war. The colonel was found in an abandoned Union aid station and was taken to Gordonsville Receiving Hospital a few miles away. He died July 8th at the age of 31 and is buried at his home. So he languished for quite a while before he gave up the ghost, as they say. Uh, he was wounded on June 11th and didn't actually repose until July 8th. So, wow. That must have been horrible. So he's buried at his home in Hickory Hill in Nottoway County. Colonel Carter, with his regiment and brigade, played a significant role in the Confederate victory in this battle, in which he gave his life. Here in his own words, he leaves us a very detailed, outstanding, and action-packed legacy of his day-by-day -day experiences in the war between the states. The diary begins with the first entry being made on July 27, 1862. And then it ends abruptly uh, on May 1st of 1864. He just stops recording entries for some reason, and I, I don't know why he stopped writing in his war journal but it just ends it's just that's it and of course the battle of trevilian station is not till the next month so there's you know a two-month period at the end of his life where he doesn't record anything uh there's short little blurbs he writes down the day-by-day -day activities that he's involved in and one of the things you'll get from reading this is <clears throat> The war was constant. I think sometimes you're reading, you think, oh, it's just big battles with really nothing going on in between. But he's, you know, he lays out all the activities that they're involved in. Some of them are real short, maybe a line or two, where he'll just say, you know, he'll mention the day's date and he'll say, it was clear and, it was clear and bright today, a beautiful day. Nothing happened, you know, nothing much happened. Then he has longer entries where he'll talk about things that are more uh, memorable, you know, whether it be capturing soldiers, whether they be out cutting telegraph lines and tearing up railroad tracks, there's a wide range of activities that they're involved in, you know. So it was a quick read, an interesting read, and of course, um, like I said, it ends rather abruptly. It's a quick read because of the way that it's laid out. I mean, it just, it moves. Uh, you can read this book in one sitting because, I mean, it's only the actual log itself. It's 115 pages. It's, it's really short. It's not the best, you know, uh, memoir or diary or whatever that I've ever read. Um... But, you know, it's, it'll give you kind of an overview of day-to-day -day activities. The back of the book, in part two, back here, there is a review 
of the Battle of Trevelyan Station, which took place on June 11th and 12th of 1864, approximately 45 miles northwest of Richmond. And he writes a little bit about the battle itself. <clears throat> Tells you what Sheridan's plan is. And there is a map here, as well as a picture of Wade Hampton leading the charge. And you have day one. As you can see, Wickham is engaged with Custer. And of course, our Lieutenant Colonel William Carter here was with Wickham. He's assigned to Wickham, so chances are this is where he got his mortal injury was fighting with Custer's uh, cavalry. So day one, and then day two, there's the map for day two. Here we have the organization of the Confederate and Union forces. So here's the Confederate forces here. You've got uh, Hampton, General Wade Hampton. And then, let's see, Wickham's brigade is down here. So this is where um, Lieutenant Colonel Carter was assigned. Then on this page, we have the Union Cavalry Corps. Of course, you've got Phil Sheridan. And then you have uh, Brigadier General uh, Custer, George Armstrong Custer, who almost, Custer almost got killed at the Battle of Trevelyan Station. Uh, he was completely surrounded and cut off at one point. Some people have called it Custer's first last stand. <laughs> So he almost did not get out of there with his life. They were involved in some heavy fighting. Lost a lot of men. Very interesting. I will uh, try to link something about the Battle of Trevelyan Station in the description box below. I'm not sure if this is a photo of uh, Lieutenant Colonel Carter or not. I don't know. I couldn't find a picture of him. This, this isn't listed. This may be a reenactor. I don't know who this is. I have no clue. Uh, the gentleman looks older, so I, I mean, I don't know. Um, I will see if I can find real quick a picture of Hampton. I know there's one in here. There's a few photos. There's not a whole lot in here, but... Uh, <clears throat> Here you go. General Wade Hampton was the overall commander at that battle of uh, Trevelyan Station. Trevelyan Station was a Confederate victory. You know, Sheridan, <laughs> I don't know, Sheridan got whipped quite often. Um, yeah. Anyways, here is William Carter Wickham. Here, this is Lieutenant Colonel Carter's commander. All right, that's really, that's it. I won't go on too much. Anyways, thanks for watching. Short review. Good read. Uh, quick read. You can, like I said, you can read this in one sitting. Kind of give you an overview of what kind of activities Confederate cavalry or cavalry in general is engaged in on a day-to-day -day basis. So... Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. God bless.